Um, so first item on the agenda is review minutes of previous meetings. The only one we have to do is the July 10th meeting. Um, does anybody want to see it? You did. Yeah. Service. Anybody? Jim, do you want to? I move that we accept the minutes of July 10th as submitted. We have a second. I'll second that. All right. That's beautiful. Any discussion? Both here. No. Okay. Um, we're going to do a roll call vote. Um, Jim? John? No, Stane. I don't believe I was here. All right. Julie Chalfant, I. Mark? Mark Brennan, I. David. Dave Sharp, I. All right. So that passes yeah. 4 zero, 1. All right. What's next on the agenda? It's not the agenda. There we go. Election of officers. Um, so we need to elect, nominate and elect a chair, a vice chair, a personnel committee rep, and a CIPC rep, Capital Improvement Planning Committee rep. Um, I know. Any nominations for any of that? I nominate you for chair. And I would be happy to do it again if nobody else wants to. Second. Okay. So we got me for chair. How about a vice chair? Probably make a photo, don't we? Huh? I was going to do all four and just vote all okay. at once, or do you want to vote no, individually? Do I'll, do, I'll be vice chair again. Okay. I nominate John, John Presby for vice chair. Second. All right. Vice chair. Personnel. David, you up for doing personnel again? Um, I guess I am. I kind of wish it would rotate a bit, but um, if there's no other takers and nobody there to do it, I guess I'll Secretary too. I, I think everyone gets all Yeah, tonight. I was going to say that. <laughs> Everybody gets a job. Huh? I'd like to nominate David Sharp for um, okay. personnel committee. All right. We have a second. Second. All right. Um, CIPC, you up for that again, Mark? Sure. Unless we want to give it to Beth. Nominate Mark Brennan for CIPC. Rep. Second. Okay. Um, and then secretary. Jim, are you willing to do that again? Yeah, Great. Is the, the secretary. Excellent. Second that. All right. So it has been moved and seconded by various people to have Chair Julie Chalfant, Vice Chair Don Foreski, Personnel Committee Rep David Sharp, CIPC Rep Mark Brennan, Secretary Jim Campius. Any discussion? All right, we will do a roll call vote. Jim? James K James Cambius, aye. John? John Pareski, aye. Julie Chalpin, aye. Mark? Mark Brennan, aye. David? Dave Sharp, aye. All right, it's unanimous. You're just flying through this. All right, um, <laughs> updates on other committees and accountant activities. Um, I guess one update that's not really on a committee, but um, Allie has submitted her resignation. She's not able to keep up with the meetings. Um, so we are short one person and are looking for another fantastically wonderful person like Allie to join us and um, continue on. So if anybody has any thoughts on that, let me know. Yeah, um, I did we'll see it on the town, on we <clears throat> town is website of committee openings. I don't believe finance was on it. Uh, so yeah, I don't think so either. This just, just came happened. up. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I didn't yeah. know about it. Yeah, we can get yeah. it up there. For sure. <clears throat> and they're they're appointed by the moderator, right? Yes. So, yes. Yep. Yeah, we'd have to have Dan. Dan. Yeah. Hey. There are handouts okay. here. Thank you. Um, so, Think on that if anybody has any ideas or suggestions, kind of talk it up and whatever. Um, anybody else have updates on committees or anything that you want to bring to this group? No. OK. 
Okay. <laughs> we'll save that for next. Um, so the special town meeting, oh, financial reports. Let's review financial reports. Um, Brenda has sent out end of year reports for the last fiscal year and um, reports as of the end of September already we have. So yeah, top things, it's only the 3rd of October. So um, does anybody have any questions on anything on those reports? I actually had a couple about the, um, the end of quarter reports. It was just mostly a question of me not understanding how some things were accounted. Okay. Like, um, let's see, where is it? Um, I should have taken notes on this, but I'm just doing this. I wasn't sure if we were going to discuss this. What are county assessments and charges? There is no county. <laughs> um, I think that's just the category uh, name that's that's given. Let's see where what page are you on? That would be no, uh, uh, eight three zero. Yeah, so that is just the FERCOG assessment. Okay, so yeah. FERCOG is. Casey has her hand up. All right. Oh, go ahead, Casey. Can everybody speak up a little bit? I can't hear, which means anybody that's listening or watching when they watch this may not be able to hear. I don't mean to be a pain in the butt. I just. Oh. Maybe it's a little here. And then Beth will have to Yep. All right. Somebody said. It was me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Forgot where we were. Oh, so financial I, reports. So yeah, that's that's our annual assessment from the first call. Okay. And I had another one about electronic disposal. I don't remember budgeting for that one. That's uh what is it, four three nine? So it's labeled as that, but that's the uh, landfill monitoring account. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Might be time to rename some of these. Yeah, I, you know, those those were automatic when we switched over to soft right. I don't know if I can change those, but I should I should see if I can. I know there's some weird ones. Yes. Okay. That's a lot of electronics disposal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about this. Can't you just dump them on the railroad tracks like everybody else does? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that was it. For me. That's just funny. Uh, the, uh, the budget has it, right? The yes. budget sheet says. Well, that's because we, we put the budget together and exactly. labeled it the way it's supposed to be. Yes. Yeah. And in, in a detailed report, it shows it correctly. It's just when I asked them to do a summary report for the finance committee way back when, they couldn't seem to get it any closer than this. So it was a little bit of a frustrating experience and I gave up trying to get it any closer. Hey. Any other questions on the reports? Reports, David? No. Okay. All right. Um, so next item on the agenda is to review the um, warrant. So special town meeting is October 23rd. I'm actually, I'm going to be out of town that week, so I'm not going to be able to go. Hmm. Um, so if somebody else is willing to volunteer to be like the, the voice of the finance committee at the meeting, anybody want to do Don is vice that? chair, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll be there. That's quite the frown. <laughs> I'll be there. You'll be what? I'm planning to be there. So. Okay. I should be there. What time is the meeting? 7 p.m. Where in here? Here or the it's high school? At, uh, it's at the school. 7 p.m. The... At Frontier. Okay, with that, um, Brenda, do you want to lead this discussion or Casey? Um, um, I can I can certainly lead the discussion. Um, okay, we have a number of things on this special town meeting warrant, and the first one is um, 
a prior year bill that uh, we discovered we did not pay. And that's for $2,240. Um, it's for the transportation for the Smith Folk students. We did have the bill, it just got missed. So um, this uh, was brought to our attention here last month. So it was too late to put it on, on the year end financial statements. I'd like to make a motion to approve the transfer of $2,240 um, under Article 1 as written. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right. We'll do a roll call vote. Jim? James Camby is aye. Beth? Beth Brown, aye. John? John Poreski, aye. Julie Chalf and I. Mark? Mark Brennan, aye. David? Dave Sharp, aye. That passes unanimously. Article 2. Okay. Article 2 is to um, provide $3,000 for an AED at the transfer station. And we um, had a discussion about that today. We were going to request the select board consider taking it off of the warrant. Um, it could possibly be absorbed into the transfer station budget. And if it isn't, um, we could possibly use reserve fund money to, to cover Fine the overage. Fine with that. If you guys are open, if it gets in trouble by three grand at the end of the year, makes sense. Well, we did, Either we did way, budget for a little higher reserve fund because we've, we've right. tightened up the budget some. Yep. Um, so it seemed like it was a fitting thing that we could do. Is the select board looking to pass over this article? Uh, we haven't discussed it yet. I just got news of it tonight. I think they would be fine with it. We just, uh, Jim at the transfer station thought it'd be a really good idea to have a defibrillator uh, thing up there. Just people are, you know. They're lifting heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sense. You never know. It's and it's far away. Yeah. So we thought it'd be a good yeah. idea. And then maybe get a little bit of training on it. Um, the the uh, So I'm sure that I, I wouldn't speak for them, but I think that they'd be fine as long as, you know, we just wanted it funded. We thought we had some free cash, maybe we would do it here, but if there's a way to roll it into that budget, that makes sense. And if you could help at the end of the year, if you short a little bit to cover that. Yeah. That makes sense, that's and fine. It, I don't think we'd have any issue with it. And the warrant isn't closed yet. So if the select board votes to take this off, it'll just actually come off here altogether and won't even be, right, yep. Casey? Yeah. I, I'm confused what's new. Um, the comment says the superintendent will pay for this. Yes. What's so, the superintendent so, got to do with the transfer? No, the superintendent, no, the highway, the highway superintendent. superintendent. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess the media would be thought school. Kevin, okay. yeah. Kevin, no, no. Kevin has agreed to put it, you know, through okay. his budget and hope for the best. But if things go out of whack, then then the reserve Deal fund with it is later. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Yep. So is there a motion? So is there a need to have a motion? Should we just skip it? Yeah. Yeah. If it's if it's definitely coming off, we'll take it off. Yeah, I don't see any reason if you guys are then, Go ahead, Casey. Casey. I, I've recommended that the board take it off. They will probably address that tomorrow at their yeah. meeting. So these, this one and the next one, I'll recommend. You'll see that's what John was commenting on is the comment that I wrote. So because if we can cover it with current budgets, I'd prefer to take it off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Save the free cash. Yeah. That's not my decision. That's theirs. <laughs> I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah, I agree. I don't see why they wouldn't. Is there any reason for us to vote this now in case the select board doesn't take it off? That way we don't have to meet again and the recommendation will be in there. She makes a good point. I guess might as well. Yeah. It, that way I move that we recommend uh, $3,000 for an AED at the transfer station. Second. Okay. <clears throat> um, any discussion? All right. Jim Cambius. James Cambius, aye. Beth Brown. Beth Brown, aye. John Pereski. John Pereski, aye. Julie Chalf and I. Mark, Mark Brennan, aye. David. Dave Sharp, aye. All right, that's unanimous. Article three. Okay, article three is to provide $9,500 towards the installation of pedestrian crossing lights um, at the intersection of North Main and Pleasant Streets. Um, Trevor and I were talking about this today and felt like that expenditure would fit under the appropriation that we did a few years ago for complete streets. I could explain that a little bit. When we were going to start the common, 
uh, we had um, passed an article for 40,000 for the engineering for that. And then uh, when Jeff, then we realized a lot of that is uh, couldn't be done with complete streets because it was mainly um, state owned. And Jeff Upton at the time thought, well, maybe you should just ask for another 40 the following year and uh, use that for the engineering, which we have. And this money sat there and we thought that would make sense because we'd maybe do the, the sidewalk, the part that we do own, we would use some money there uh, to, to do that. But it has been sitting for a while. And if we could, this is all intents and purposes to make the street safer and stuff. So we were thinking maybe we would just use the money there for that. And, you know, when we get around to doing the common, improve the streets with whatever's left. So just a thought, instead of using free cash or something, maybe just use the money that's been sitting there. If that makes sense to you all. Yeah, it seemed if yeah. we could take something off of this warrant that could yeah. possibly be paid for through another another means. Something we've already, already So it's money that's already been voted. Yes. And it's a legal use of that money and it yep. yes keeps us from using free cash and voting on yet another thing at time. Correct. Meeting. Correct. That's okay. that, yeah, Brenda came up with that today and we thought it'd be a good idea to, to I mean I don't think anyone would have an issue. We were planning to use it for there. It's just down the street a little bit and it's making the kids kids and the crossing safer there. I don't think anyone would have an issue with just moving where we would use it still for street work. Okay. I, I do have a question. Would this be like the blinky warning lights or would it be an actual traffic cop? Casey might be able to answer that. I, I know that we got a grant for doing the crosswalk work and this was our match to that grant, I think. So and I, I do believe it's flashing lights in a crosswalk. Is that right, Casey? So yeah, it is pedestrian okay. crossing lights. And so we were trying to make that distinction. It's not a traffic light, but it's more like it's the blinking lights. I believe it's the solar ones, James. Yeah, okay. you press a button, they flash. Can, can I ask a question? Uh, is this where um, we have a school crossing guard in the morning and at the dismissal time? Yes, by the auto auto parts store there. Yep. Yeah, and, and we and we still have that person. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I guess I'm just throwing it out there. If, if this is this if this money is sitting in a pot to be used for street stuff, and there's a lot of talk about redoing our you know kind of downtown area at various times is it money that could be better used there since we already have a person during the traffic times uh pedestrian times well i think it's safer long run to we, we've been looking to make those crossings by the schools safer so we think even even if you have a cross well, I, I know sharon did it for years and years and she always wished that we had something safer even with her out there she you know always felt like she may have gotten hit worried about yeah. this a lot so we think doubling up that safety effort would be smart and then leaving the rest i think thirty thousand to continue work downtown yeah i mean this person volunteer no no they're, they're paid. paid yeah they're paid yep. i mean obviously this is yeah, I'm not a traffic engineer, but I do sometimes think that um, you know, kids are going to, if you put in a crosswalk that tells, tells kids to go, uh, they're going to go and not necessarily look for the cars. And so, and I'm assuming this will be more used when there isn't a traffic guard there, since we're not going to get rid of the traffic guard. So, it does increase visibility, David, Yeah. of, of that crossing area. Yep. Yep. As I said, I'm not a traffic engineer. Yeah. <laughs> I just, um, it's, yeah, putting something there that, it just seems like we're doing, we're doubling up on, um, on that. Well, um, the, they are only there certain times. So, you know, yeah. for the frontier kids, um, they're yeah. only there for the elementary. So, is there going to be um, an overhead sort of flashing light just to sort of warn cars about that intersection in general as they're approaching? Or are we just talking about a pedestrian uh, sort of lights on the side of each side of the road with a that are, uh, as Casey said, just, that are just flashing? Or is it a stoplight? It's red, not a stoplight. Red, red and green. green. Just flashing, you know, uh, I would imagine those diamond signs says crosswalk lights flash either side when you press yeah. 
and I'm sure painting of the crosswalk. There's probably other stuff involved in the grant and signs beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't so, seen the full write up on it, but I'm not sure about the grant that Kevin and John worked on. The grant, the shared streets and spaces grant had some warning light, had some warning signs sort of as you reached, because it's sort of it, it's this is where it sort of meets complete streets that the state does. Um, there's usually some warning signs that lead you to those lighted crossing areas mm -hmm. and the intent is to create visibility. Um, I haven't seen Kevin and John's grant, so I don't know all the details. But generally, the idea is to create some visibility in the spaces that you know people are going to be crossing, where you have painted crosswalks. Um, and I think a lot of us have seen that in other places. In this case, there's been a lot of um, concern about North Main Street, especially as you get up to the curve right around um, the monument and FRS. This could slow some of that traffic down a bit. This is not the curve, though. This is the elementary school road. This is before the curve, but okay. again, it creates yeah. some visibility. Yeah, yeah. Is it on both sides of the street? I usually they are, but I'm not. 100%. Wouldn't that be like, like the Galinsky's driveway there, where all the trees? Basically, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't that be weird it's, to put something right? I think it's right on that right on that corner but i'm not sure it wouldn't i don't think they would put it right in their driveway but well, I, but yeah you're right I mean, they, they have to cite it go in and out of there, yeah i didn't see the plan of where they kind of put it but wherever that crosswalk is now where the kids cross um yeah i haven't seen the drawing exactly where it would go but I, I'm, I'm gonna withdraw sort of my concerns so obviously the highway department or people who know better want it and it's not an issue of money because we have money there to spend on it then yep concerns right again so, we have no motion on the thing no we don't would anybody like to make a motion may make a motion to approve the uh article three of ninety five hundred dollars for the pedestrian crossing lights we have a second second it so for discussion purposes I'm almost feeling like I would vote against this because there's other funding that can be used and it makes more sense. Which, which other funding? What you're saying, right. So there's funding that was already voted a few years ago that they plan to use instead of this. So we expect this article not to be on the warrant. We're only voting right. it be, in case it ends up on the warrant. Right. Um, Good point. Same with the one before. Same as the one before, I think you might yeah, want same to consider. as the one before. Although I guess if some reason comes up that that funding is not useful, yeah. I mean, not usable. Yeah, we think it is, but should really double yeah. check. I don't know. Any Anybody else have discussion? Um, I, I just want to say I've, I've seen way too many close calls, even with the crossing guard. Um, I've driven past at times when, uh, you know, Sharon was out there and, you know, she's almost been hit herself. Um, there's a lot of people that enter uh, and exit out of Pelican um, who don't live around here, who fly down that road. So I think, you know, this is kind of a belts and suspenders thing for me. Whatever kind of safety we can add for those kids, the, you know, the better. I agree. Well, I don't think anybody's against the idea of cross right. crosswalk lights. It's just paying the source right. funding. Yeah, right. Um, I think you're yeah. in favor so, of like, it. What I'm saying is, like, right. if, if it doesn't pass with this, then you know we have this backstop of, um, or, yeah, uh, with of the the ninety five hundred. If if we recommend this for the warrant mm -hmm. and it stays on the warrant, would that prevent the use of other funds? Uh, let's see. No, I, let's see. No. Uh, so it's to vote to raise, appropriate, or transfer from available funds. So you could do, yeah, you could do anything. Yep. Kind of wide open. Yep. And I believe it, if, if it's okay, we will, uh, like okay. the one before, remove it. Any further discussion? This is only that one spot. 
Like, I, right. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. There's so many other spots well, that need it. I mean, on the, <laughs> like, for example, the in front, in front of the library, yes, we'll do there that's so scary is that when you're crossing and someone stops for you, the car behind's like, oh, I'll just go around. I know there's so and, much asphalt. I did that. I almost hit somebody. Yeah, yes. probably one of my family members. Yeah, cross her you're right out in front of there. Yeah, <laughs> live and learn. I, I feel like that's the more dangerous spot than it that is. other corner, just because that other corner is a real corner where, like, I, you're slowing down. Yeah, you yeah. look like as a pedestrian, you make sure you've yeah. got three places. The one in front of that library is like very dangerous crossing. There's cars parked. Yeah, it's true. So no I don't doubt. know. I'm not sold on like the so place left. I mean, maybe we should do okay. both. I, I know that yeah. like that's kind of beyond the scope of this discussion right now, though. Yeah. So we can make that recommendation to well, the, I, I, I suppose the, the reason why I say it is, you know, it it it, it seems to, to me it doesn't seem like it has to be an either or. Like I, I think we should do it now and then and then do the other continue one. Continue to look. Yeah. Maybe All we right. Do the library work. Any further discussion? Pass. Squash that. <laughs> All right. Roll call vote. Jim Cambius. James Cambius. I. Beth Brown. I. John Pereski. John Pereski. I. Julie Chalf and I. Mark. Mark Brennan. I. David Sharp. Dave Sharp. I. All right. That's unanimous. Thank Article you. four. Okay. Article four is for uh, money for a grant match for uh, an MVP grant award. Um, there is some um, uh, question about the amount um, because we have two spreadsheets <laughs> and we don't know which do. one is correct. So um, surprise, surprise when it comes to this. This is the money we got for the front of the elementary school to put in the uh, repave. Well, our, our funding is the repave, but then the the um, MVP was to do the rain gardens and take the water off the roof and manage the water and deal with the, the drainage there. And then I, th I think there was another 2.0. Uh, we, we got a, a fairly large MVP grant. We, we didn't think we would get this year, but but we got everything we applied for, which was amazing. Go ahead, Casey. Has a ton more info. So we have two grants, actually. This is the MVP action grant, which is the MVP six grant. And it covers several, there's several project tasks. Um, MVP 2.0, Trevor, we don't have to come up with a match on. Oh, great. So this is just the action grant. Okay. But I think my number may be wrong. And I'm going to tell you this tomorrow in the selectmen's meeting, because I kept looking at, at the, there's a spreadsheet out there. There's like two copies of it. I kept looking at the spreadsheet going, that doesn't not match my number. So I think it might be 92,175. Um, which is why I'm bringing this up now. So there's several items within this grant. So there's several tasks and it's actually a two-year grant. Um, so FY24 has a series of grants and FY25 has a series, um, series of tasks. Uh, the total match though, if I'm looking at this spreadsheet that I think is the right one is 92,175.85. So that said, would, if I submit that to the board as a change prior to publishing the warrant and tell you about it now, um, would you take that into consideration as the finance committee? Yes, we can make the motion to approve this up to 92,176. Yeah. And then okay. whatever number you come up with, as long as it's less than that would work. Exactly, so that's what I'm hoping. If it is 92,176, then I'm all set. Um, if it's 89.4, I like the number better, but yeah. <laughs> Only up I up. just, I, I, I want to be cautious, but essentially it's for the tasks that cover the two year period. And it's several things. It's, um, rain gardens and work over at the Leary lot. It's some educational elements for the students at the school. Um, there's also the community engagement sort of around the Leary lot and the green elements to sort of educate people about it. So there's a number of moving parts in this grant. Do you have that? Can you tell us what is actually in the grant? 
I this is this 92,000 is not 90 million 92,000 is just our match which means the grant is like two it's couple. over 200,000 it's 238,000 and 72 dollars it's not huge compared to it's the not match. huge but it isn't small either yeah and but so you'll know 238 plus our match Mm -hmm. That's $300,000 for a rain garden and some education? No, it's element. It's different elements. There's bidding that's involved because some of these projects are, are um, horizontal. In other words, public works. Right. So there's other elements. There's engineering involved as well. So that can sometimes get expensive. The town also contributes in-kind hours to it. So there's always a lot of moving parts with the MVP grants. Do you have the spreadsheet in front of you? I might no. have grabbed it because I looked at the number and went, that doesn't look oh, right. That's, I think that's Is it. that it there? Oh, yeah, yep, that looks like Yeah. That. So there's tree yeah. box filters. You have to go through the engineering and construction right. documents, the bidding yeah. stuff. Yeah. So that all plays a part in actually getting to that type of function in the Leary lot or wherever we place it. Um, so one's for historic Deerfield, and then you have the educational elements, and then you have other green infrastructure for the Leary lot, which is bioswales and more tree, tree box filters. Um, again, you've got some engineering and or construction oversight that goes with that. There's also reporting elements that the consultant generally works with the town on. And that has a, that's another task. Okay. Um, Trevor's making us copies of the spreadsheet so we can look at the elements. That yeah. yeah. So while he's doing that, doesn't, Mark, doesn't this have to go in front of um, CIPC for the capital, any capital items in there? If there's capital purchases or any kind of property being purchased or engineering for anything uh, like that uh, for $10,000 or more, it would have to, yes. So did the, did it, I, we've talked about this. I remember talking about this before. Oh, okay. Thank you. About the rain gardens at Leary Lot. Is this like the rain gardens at in Old Deerfield also? Historic, whatever that. Mark, did they ever put any of that before? Well, you wouldn't know you weren't there. Damn. I don't think so. Um, I don't think they ever put the grants, these grants before you, did they? I don't I don't recall. It it doesn't ring a bell. That's what I that's what I'm wondering because I didn't see them go before capital. The Leary lot's already in play though, because we we went through that. And so this is a pertinences to the to the Leary lot. So this looks like basically three projects each at about a hundred thousand. The old Deerfield, the Leary lot, and the uh, elementary school. Did the school um, reach out about this student engagement and project, or are we? putting yet another burden on the um, school teachers who are already I, teaching I quite a bit. was not involved any, with any of the MB know? planning. I know Tim and Carolyn have been on that and Chris Curtis. I know we have a meeting tomorrow that's on the, this is all on the agenda for tomorrow too. Mm -hmm. But um, I know the school had been engaged on the, on the uh, entryway, but you know, yeah. yeah. I don't know about the other education stuff. What line is the entryway on? 
Uh, I want to say it's task, uh, two, is it task two? Construct a green entryway at Deerfield Elementary School. That's oh. the oh, total of 154. Okay. Um, the total grant is 114. And then there's an in time match, the cash match, which is 38. Uh, so total match is like 39 with in kind, 39.679 for that one. Cash, uh, let's see, one is the green and oh, historic clear field, and then three. Oh, Leary Lot is three. Yep. So I don't have my capital notes in front of me, Casey, but I, I think we talked about potentially funding stuff out of the MVP grant, but I don't think it was any of these projects when we discussed this. That's what I'm wondering, because I don't remember talking about any of these. Uh, of course, the the grant application didn't go out until May of this year after town meeting. Hmm. It was. Did, did the grant application specify the projects that it's supposed to go to? Yes, you had. That's what you're looking oh. at. This form was submitted with the grant application. Okay. I think it's the right one. That's what I was looking at this afternoon after I saw. And after and I so, talked to Brenda. And we received the grant. Yes. And how much did we receive? So the total grant is two thirty eight seventy one and seventy five yeah. cents. So obviously, to get that two thirty eight, we're supposed to match it. Correct. Eighty nine. Well, so nope. we're talking about leveraging this extra money. Here. Yeah. Yes. Right. Total was 336. Um, so the total cash they gave us was 238,071.75. Yep. Right. Our match is 92,175.85. And then there's like $6,000 worth in of in kind yep. match. Yep. And for a total of 336,327.60. And I, I'm not sure, were we? Funding some of this match for Le Leary Lot out of the ARPA? I don't think so. We did talk about that on Capital at one time, using ARPA funds for that, but I, I think we voted not to, or we decided not to do it. I know we're doing ARPA for the whole Leary Lot. I just didn't know if this part of this match was coming out of that as well, or if, or if it was just free cash or something. And I don't know. I'm sorry, since I don't have the warm in front of me, but did somebody say something about one of the projects that this is geared towards is for historic Deerfield? One is for oh, a rain yeah. garden and historic Deerfield, yes. So in when you say in historic Deerfield, do you mean old Deerfield? The organization Deerfield. or you just mean somewhere in town? I is believe it, it's, in it's town. somewhere in old Deerfield. Okay. <laughs> I so, don't exactly so, know the spot, sorry. So it's not for the entity historic. No. No, okay. no, no. No, okay. it's in, I, I would consider it old Deerfield, so along the main street of old Deerfield. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that we were not yep. Imp impeding on historic Deerfield. <laughs> well, or not or getting them to pay their portion of a match. Yeah. Right. Contributing to them. All right. Does anybody have a motion? Um. Yeah, I move that we um, recommend expending no more than $92,176 for uh, matching funds towards this grant. Do we have a second? I'll second that. All right, discussion. Uh, I'm concerned about CIPC. Did you, what, did they approve it or not? It's... I'm also, where does the 6,000 in kind dollar those ones come from? That's hours expended by staff, Beth. Those are just hours, not dollars. Yes. Right. Last time we did an MVP grant, it was much higher than that. And this one will probably be much higher than this too. <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> does, does CIPC got any meetings coming up? I'm wondering if we can approve it subject to their approval. We could do that. We're going to meet before the special town meeting. Mark and I were just talking about that, John, before the meeting. Yeah. So I'll make a motion. To to, motion to, yeah, why don't you go ahead and do that? I'd like to modify Jim's motion to say we approve 
article four for $92,000 odd dollars <laughs> subject to it being approved by capital improvement planning. Hey, does that work? Yeah. I will second that. Any discussion just on the amendment to the motion? So all we've done is add subject to CIPC approval. Any discussion on that? So we are gonna vote just on the amendment, not on the whole motion, okay? So all those in favor of amending the motion, I oh, I can't do all. Um, we'll do roll call, Jim. James can be aside. Beth. Beth Brown and I. John. John Fresquia. Julie Chalf and I, Mark. Mark Brown and I. David. Dave Sharp, I. Okay, so that is a unanimous for the amendment to the motion. Okay, so any discussion on the whole motion? Is there another place to get this money from? And like if CIPC doesn't approve it, I mean, it's a grant, aren't we kind of stuck? CIPC only recommends. So okay. we can just not recommend it and it doesn't really matter. It's just more of like an indicator to the town yeah. that the CIPC didn't recommend it. Yeah. Well, we have this grant, so somehow we have to pay this. I'm just asking these questions. I mean, that, yeah. well, we don't, that's also my question. We like, could uh, return the grant, yeah, I suppose, and not do the work. Not do the work and not spend okay. money. Okay, just curious. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if we're going to spend ninety thousand dollars to get three hundred thousand dollars worth of mean stuff, why not? <laughs> yeah, as long as it's. I mean, is it a? Um, I'm not arguing against. This. I'm arguing against the why not. Yes. If it's not a reasonable use of four hundred thousand dollars. Right. Then just because they're giving us three hundred thousand doesn't mean we should waste the state's money and our money on something or other. I'm not saying it is a waste. Right. Yeah. Where where would we normally come up with the money for something like this? Well, I don't think we would. Appropriate. <laughs> we, um, we've we've That's taken it out of stabilization before. Yep. Okay. Um, in this case, we have free cash. We were looking at eventually, you know, early on, we were looking at doing, um, you know, actually having a line item for grants and MVP grants or any other grant grant matches. But I don't think we've ever come around to creating that or appropriating that because you never really know if you're going to get it or how much. So how much do you put aside and then not use? Um, but it is, I've always felt ever since we started this whole process that, you know, we should have some uh, people should have some knowledge on what we're trying for. And, you know, so it's not just last minute, Hey, we need 90,000. Cause we got a grant. Um, we should have some more planning involved with it, but it's hard. Mm -hmm. Can we actually, um, can you talk briefly about free cash and how much was um, certified this year and why it was high and all that? Surprise. <laughs> sure. Sorry. I, you know what? I was thinking about that and thinking, oh, I should have brought my free cash information mm -hmm. out here with me. Um, we did get 1.5 million plus in free cash this year. And after um, reviewing some of the accounts, uh, really what it boiled down to is, is um, we had gotten much more income in permits uh, than we budgeted. Um, but those were some very specific um, things. So for instance, Eagle Brook paid for a permit right at the end of the year for a dining hall. So that was like $216,000 that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, we also took in, I can't remember the dollar amount. It could be up to 200,000 from uh, Newpro for the things that they were working on. And so the combination of those was really why we we hit the threshold that we hit. Mm -hmm. Of the 1.5, how much did we is plan to use for 2023 operating expenses? Or is that after that's that? that's after, after the two, that? Well, the 2023 operating expenses. And, and the 2024 operating expenses came out of last year's free cash. So this is free cash right now that we have to spend. It's 1.5 million plus. It's free, free cash. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> Unobligated free cash. Yeah, no. Quite the name. Good. That's good news. 
I guess. Maybe we can avoid a two and a half overrun. But yeah, you know, absolutely. That's Maybe. what we thought. We don't get to spend it. Unless we spend it all on um, <laughs> yeah. rain gardens. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I'm sorry. Any other discussion on, on this item? Go ahead, Tim. So I did have a question. Um, so if it, this was alluded to, I think, um, if we weren't getting a grant, would these projects be undertook, undertaken at all? The only one that would, I mean, in my mind, we've been trying to get the entryway done for a long time. At the elementary school. At the elementary school. It probably wouldn't, um, I guess we would have to do something with the water management that comes off the roof there, but um, would it have been this elaborate? Probably not if we didn't have the money to spend on it. Um, but we definitely we definitely need to do that. And we're, we're really struggling because the number that we have, we've funded is kind of the front entryway, but we really have the wings that go all the way out where the buses unload and wrap around the building that are in pretty rough shape too. There's a lot that's in rough shape over there. For I mean, the parking lot shop. There's a lot to do, but so the answer um, probably not. I mean, we do need to manage. Old Deerfield has a ton of water. I don't know if you've noticed. There's just a bunch backing up. So there is stuff that we need to try to manage. One tree box is not going to fix it. We really need to do you know some dredging or something all the way up through to the river, uh, all the way up five and ten, trying to manage the water out of town. Uh, Chief was up there yesterday looking at that, but long answer to your question, but well, probably I, not. I guess what it comes down to is, would it cost more than $92,000 to do what needs to be done? At the or we at get the, the bargain out of this, basically? Probably not. I mean, I mean, well, it depends on what you do, right? So if we were going to build this, yes, it would be, I mean, we need the grant money to do it. But would we do all the other work? I don't know. What is the process? I ask this a lot. Mm -hmm. What the process for someone who goes for this grant? Like, how did this grant become? Great question. So there's a there's a core group of MVP. It's a committee that comes together. Chris Curtis is on it. Uh, Carolyn's on it. I don't know. If Tim Tim I think has been at the meetings, and there are, there are others that are involved, and they meet. They go over different ways that we can deal with resiliency and how do we. How do we work on different things in town to try and deal with the the influx of water and other climate related issues um, because there's this grant funding out there and generally we were the first town in the state to do this to be certified and to apply for the grants now there's like 280 towns so it's so hard to get and the money that the state puts forward for this program hasn't increased at all that's why was, we were all floored that we got any grant money at all to do these projects this year um but so there was a committee that comes together. They look at different things they could do, yay and nay them, and then pass some off. And then the ones that we feel we could afford or are mo most important, we apply for. And, and then we see if the state gives us any money and it's back now and we got the grant. So then we have to kind of come up with the money to fund it. And if there's all the water along the whole front of the Deerfield Elementary Building, why why is it like more of that in this and less like tree boxes at the mm -hmm. very lot? Yeah. I, mean, I don't so, think the cost is the same. But. Yep. Um so the water there isn't so there is a lot of water that comes off that roof, but in this area it's managed in different areas. So it's really not a ton that we're addressing right off that front area. Part of the issue is we were thinking of, you know, we wanted to beautify that and not just make a sea of asphalt in the front. So we were trying to combine the beautification of the front of the place with um, with lineup areas uh, for the kids and um, bringing some some less heat sinks in the front. So it's not just a sea of black asphalt. We're looking at different color asphalt or stamped asphalt to try and make it more pleasing. So it's it's a mixture of trying to manage the water, make it less of a hot spot, less of a large, you know, asphalt thing and um, dress it up a little bit and manage the water. So it's a combination of all of that. We got a grant before to do some of the engineering on it. Now we've got grants to actually implement it. But yeah, there's, there's a lot to do everywhere. And we thought with the um, we were looking at using impervious pavement for the 
or pervious pavement for the um I always get that backwards like thaw and freeze and whatever um to do to do the parking lot we, you know we thought we weren't interested in doing that kind of asphalt where where you know you had we just were going to do conventional asphalt but it turns out in that area with, with the geological borings we did there's enough sand and enough drainage there that we don't have to put in a bunch of infrastructure underneath that to manage the water so it, it's a little more in paving but it's less overall because we don't have to do all of that infrastructure underneath so i think some of the tree boxes is, is factoring in some of that that's for leary lot for leary lot that. yep how would the permeable pavement uh interact with the freeze thaw cycles mm. it seems to be okay you know it's in the it's in the um tree it house. is in the uh tree house tree house has some and the and the park and ride mm. over oh, there really? and that's been that. there for a while um and it seems to work okay you are supposed to vacuum it every once in a while we don't use any sand so we just use salt but every once in a while we would probably every so many years hire you know probably um mohawk you know who used to do all the sweeping to probably they must have a back truck and do the parking lot <clears throat> but i think it works pretty good 91 is also there's a section of that that's all that way uh, you could notice kind of by the way station hmm. Any other discussion? I was a critic of it. I was not interested until I found out it was less money <laughs> to do it. And it suddenly becomes more interesting. Converted. Um, one concern I have, I'm just going to say this to say it, but <laughs> one concern I always have with these things is that we're considering the load that we're putting on the, the people in town hall and with this one in the schools. They're like, everybody Maybe. works really hard. We need to make sure that this is something people can handle mm -hmm. um, in the the scope of work that they have. Yep. Um, I, I don't know that there's anything to say to that. I asked. Uh, I asked Darius. I was always concerned about that too, and I said, "Well, how's the one look on the side of the building that we did?" He actually walked over. And he said, well, "It looks pretty good." So no, I'm thinking about like the student engagement in the project. Oh, gotcha. Like th this is somebody's going to have to like what come up with a lesson plan and then take time out of the day to go and. We did this before, and. Um, the students really like it. A lot of people are moving towards that kind of education and learning about the environment and doing the engineering stuff. So I know that they've done a couple of times before at Frontier and it's been well received. So I think they talk with them and they we're not just pushing it on them. There has been discussion okay. with their curriculum. As long as it's something that they're pulling in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion of this one? No. All right. So it has been moved and seconded that we approve this article up to $92,176 subject to CIPC recommendation. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? <clears throat> no, all right. Oh, let's do it the other way. David Sharp. David Sharp, I. <laughs> Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, no. Julie Chalvent, I. John Pareski. John Pareski, I. Beth Brown. I'm really struggling. Um, <laughs> I, I think uh, Beth Brown abstaining. Okay. Jim Cambius. James Cambius, I. So that passes 3 1 1. Okay. Wait, that doesn't add up. Oh, there's six of us? 4 yeah. 1 1. Oh, sorry. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Oh, five, six. That's a lot of twin. Did you forget? Okay. Thank you. Four, one, one. All right. Article five. Article five. So this is to provide uh, up to $250,000 towards the design and installation of an HVAC system for the police department building. Um, this is a project that um, the select board had originally thought they would be taking out of ARPA funds, but at the time that it was um, 100, voted, it, yeah, the, we were thinking it was going to be a $100,000 project, but the increase in costs has uh, brought it up to 250000 with the engineering and everything. Um, 
because now I, I'm, I'm putting words in your mouth, but, okay. but tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Because the costs of the Leary lot have been more than the board had anticipated coming out of the ARPA funds, they felt like this was something that we should pay for out of other means. Is that what, what we're doing here? I think so. Uh, you know, the, um, the ARPA has a lot more flexibility and we were willing to pay, you know, the 100000 to or whatever to do the to do the HVAC and now it's up to, it's not 250, it's less than that. That's a cap. Um, I think it'll be much less than that. I think it still has to go out to bid again, right? They did the re-engineering of it. I don't know what DCAM means, case it can fill in, but it's a DCAM project. So it, it's just much, much more expensive to do that project. When we saw the free cash numbers, we thought, well, why don't we, um, why don't we, pay for that, ask the town if they want to fund that with free cash and then um, save the money that's more flexible at the at the, at the Leary lot to do the work there. I, I, I don't know if I have all that right because there's two other members, but I think that's kind of what we were thinking okay. just to stay flexible. But see what you guys think. I, I just feel it's a lot of money to do the HVAC in that building. It's needed. Um, you know, they need HVAC there. And John, I know, has worked hard on trying to whittle that down and figure out ways to look at it. We did have another. So we paid an engineer to come and redesign everything. And then I think um, I think there's another gentleman who Tim reached out to who also took a second look at it and maybe made some recommendations. Um, it was somebody in town you think of who it was, Casey might remember, but there, there's another gentleman who serves on a board here in town. And Jason Curtis. Jason Curtis. He's an engineer, I think with Ty and Bond maybe, um, but he knows this stuff in and out and a lot of other energy efficiency stuff. I think he made a couple of recommendations, but it wasn't going to materially change the uh, cost of it. Just maybe, I think maybe using heat pumps as well. Um, so there really wasn't a way to pull money out of it. It's just an expensive item and uh, it gets more and more all the time. So I think we have to do it. You know, it, I think that building's going to be there even if we take this down, unless for some reason we find another piece of land to put the police station on when we ever take this apart to redo all these grandiose plans in town that I don't know what, when that'll all happen. But um, so I think it's going to be there long enough that we should just get it done and redo. I, I know they've had some leakage in there this summer and, and it failed at one point. DA was down trying to fix things and get it going. The summer was brutal. It was so hot and uh, it was just more than the system could handle. So I don't, I'm not 100% up on the whole project, but I think that's what I know so far. I think it's correct. We've talked about this in Capital multiple oh, times. Good. So they want to add... Um, heat pumps to the condenser system that's there uh to save um you know on what this you know two hundred fifty thousand dollar you know, quote was and then um if memory serves and unless unless they've changed something there's a statutory obligation for us to make sure that that has adequate climate control because those are the holding cells yep. um that we need to heat and cool and i believe they're doing that with you know other system like portable systems or something right now yep. so um it's something that we have to do. And every time we wait to do this, it increases in cost. Yep. So CIPC has already looked at it? Yeah, yeah, back when it was at the lower number, yeah. So are you gonna revisit it with the new number? Yes. I believe so, yes. yep. It's, it's on the agenda. On the agenda, yep. yep. Anybody like to make a motion? I'll make that motion. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion to um, transfer from available funds or otherwise provide up to $250,000 towards design and installation of a heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system uh, for the police department, as written in Article 5. Would you mind adding pending CIPC? Oh, sure. Pending CIPC approval or recommendation. Sorry. It's not I second that. Any discussion? I'm just concerned. And we're still trying to figure out what to do with the campus. And I know you alluded to the fact that it's going to be a lot of years probably before 
something happens, but we I hate to spend a quarter of a million dollars and then two years, three years from now change the building around. It'll be That's, longer than that. I know that there's a um, Senator Warren and Markey, I think, put in, and I think McGovern too, they put in a four million dollar earmark for us. If if the government could actually keep stay open and keep things going and get a budget, it in all likelihood we'll get that and that will help, you know, and then with the for with the eighteen eighty eight building. For the eighteen eighty eight building and with the influx of maybe a borrowing against this future CPA or something like that, we might have enough to get get started. But I think the police station would be down the road a ways. I, I really do. I don't think there's gonna be it's not gonna be in the next three years for sure. Yeah, I don't think I don't think John had any intent of, of right. moving out of that area. He's no making his what, noises though. He's starting to he, start he is. Oh, yeah. yeah, correct. Well there was okay. uh there was a plan that VHB had done. I think it was VHB had done. It showed different buildings here and they looked better when that wasn't there. But uh, <laughs> uh but I don't know where that would go. I, I'm not sure what what would happen? Go ahead, Jim. So the campus shared uh, heating cooling idea mm -hmm. where, you know, we'd have like ground source yep. heat exchangers. I think that could be done as a modification to existing HVAC anyway. So this would not preclude that. It would, but... Um... That I don't know about that specific job, but when we've been talking about it for the library, for example, yeah. um, up until the point that you buy the air source heat pump units, like they're going to get heat pumps, right? right. And it's going to be air source heat pumps. Once you've bought those units and put them in, then you, you can't use those obviously for the ground source. So you have to get rid of those and buy ground source heat pumps. So it's just that like the distribution in the building that all right. stays the same, but it doesn't fit what they said for the library is, is it's not financially reasonable to, to switch over at that right. point until you've Need kind it. of wear so out next, the, the yeah, units that are there. Cycle. Yeah. Yep. So we met with a climate, uh, the new climate um, secretary. That's what she's called. I was here yesterday or the day before a month, Monday. And, um, we were talking about what you know we're trying to get help to kick start that that uh project again to really we really need the help for the I, I know we applied for a federal grant that didn't come through um other places in the country got it they're very competitive but we're really trying to push the state if they want to meet their you know 2050 climate um goals we they need to help towns do that we just can't afford to do it on our own is this two hundred fifty thousand uh, project? Does it have all the bells and whistles? No, or is this the bare bones minimum? Well, the, it, it does have everything that they need to make the job functional. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be coming back and asking for more stuff, but it's not a and and they've adjusted. They've tried to make it affordable as possible, but not like I don't know, pound foolish. I mean, well, I don't know how that works, but it's you know they're not. Um, it's not a cheap system like bare bones, but it's it's everything they need, but not being extravagant, I guess I would say. <clears throat> I'm not the engineer, but I, you know, I don't really know enough about it, but I know that he's been struggling and really trying to find a way to keep this cost down because it was such such a large cost compared to what we were expecting. Can I make uh, just a quick question? <clears throat> I obviously I share the concerns everyone else has. But on the actual funding source part of this, did you begin this by saying this was originally something that was going to come out of the ARPA funds? Yes. This, yeah. So I just want to make sure, wasn't there some discussion about, you know, needing to spend ARPA funds by a certain uh, deadline or losing them, or is that passed now? We have to spend them by December of 2026. Yep. 2026. Okay, so two full year, two... Yeah. They have to be committed by the end of the year next year. Correct. Com committed meaning going to earmarked. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. And we okay. have spent some money for the HVAC system already out of ARPA. The engineering some part. Some of the engineering yeah. costs. Yeah. Yep. So the reason we are not doing this out of ARPA is because the select board 
Is that right? The select board sort of has a bit more say than other people about the ARPA funds? Yes. Yes. But and and, and so yep. And so so the select board is basically saying that they because ARPA funds are more flexible, yep. it's nice to just sort of have that in your back pocket for future things that come up, or is our Fund, are the upper funds there already kind of for the very lot's going to be more expensive than everybody thinks yeah we so, know we just don't know what the price tag is yet so and we felt like, like a very comforting thought it's not it's it's not that it we didn't expect it to be expensive we just didn't know what it was going to look like david we've adjusted yeah. design and stuff and we felt there's a little more flexibility there you know um we held off on doing the the uh, loader last year with ARPA as well, just kind of not sure. And we, we actually didn't fund it at all. So there are some expenses that may wind up creeping up that we have a little more flexibility can help with. Um, and we felt this is a project that's a capital project that should be funded with town money to do. Um, and then it would give us the flexibility on the Leary lot to finish that out and not have to come to the town for money. What's the difference between the money you've already spent on the engineering and the amount here that's towards the design? What's the difference good, between good engineering? Good question. And design? I, I don't know what we've spent so far on the engineering. We could get that. Uh, yeah, for I, don't, you. I don't remember. You. So is there still yeah. designing that needs to be done then? No, yeah, I think all the engineering is done. It's just bidding, probably money out for, you know, writing the bid and hearing the bid. And yeah. Yeah, now, I, but I think we, we've system. already bid this project once, which yep. is why we were back to the drawing board. Yep. Um, it came in way higher. The it came over, over twice as much. There's yep. also construction oversight, Beth. You want your engineer to help you make sure this project goes well. Yep. And I, I don't recall how much, what, were you saying 20,000 or something? I was like going to say it was over 10,000. Okay. I don't remember. Because it came right. to capital. So Got it. Yeah. And Brenda, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, are is there any different expense in terms of a dollar spent from the town versus a dollar spent from ARPA? In other words, is there anything that's more efficient for us to spend? No. Or the timing of the expense? Is any of this money making any money for us sitting in an account anywhere? So that it's better to use one pot than the other financially? The only concern I have is that we spend the money on the Leary lot before the time is up, because otherwise we could lose it. Or the ARPA time is up. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. So is there any danger that we're not going to spend the ARPA money, all of it, on the Leary lot because it's the timeline? No. And we had, we had other projects, I think, we had talked. We had a meeting about about this when we weren't sure if the feds were going to come back and try and claw the money back at one point. So we had a meeting and said, well, if this doesn't happen, like we, we had put money for the um, ambulance, uh, right. Then we have money towards the ambulance. There was other, other projects that we could spend that money on in a drop of a hat if we needed to, that were all capital based, you know, broadest town use. Um, but yeah. So I think, I don't think there's, there's not a concern. We're starting construction. We hope, hopefully, very shortly on that project, and then would Great. love to tie that into the common because we've been sitting on that money for years. So I'm trying to get that going, and then the transition between, you know, in front of, you know, anything that we could do to try and dress up the town with the common and in front of Cheslicks. So there's a there's a ton to do downtown, but I think there's a lot to do with that Leary lot that we have that flexibility would be great. I feel like there's a little bit of like, woohoo, we got free cash. Let's spend it all going on. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, well, just as a, as a benchmark, how much do we have currently of ARPA funds? Mm -hmm. About a million three. Yeah. Okay. The Leary lot expense is going to take that all up, or would no? I think we have some other things that we already. So would there be like a million, a quarter million left in it for HVAC? For, so I mean, I guess what I'm not no. clear on is if we don't, 
what else is there to spend it on? Oh, there's a million things to spend it on. I mean, there's if so they much do the 1888 the building, there's some work there. If yep. they do the church building. There's a ton of I mean, the church. There's. I, I guess, okay. I, it just seems like this is as if we have two bank accounts. My do. wife and I have two bank accounts, and we're arguing about which bank account to spend money out of for the porch. Yeah. You know. It's going to come out of one of our accounts, so why does it matter which one? Because the select board has say over the over the ARPA, and we're 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 trying to be judicious as we can, and we've been spending a lot of it on a lot of capital stuff that should be coming out of taxation, capital taxation, and the, the ARPA was meant for large infrastructure projects that we could not afford to do otherwise, and so we had that flexibility as a select board in consultation with the finance committee. It's not just all on our own. We want to. You know, we want to be fair and just try to get everybody's input and try to do the right thing. It's just the ARPA leaves us a lot more flexibility than any other account. And without that large project done yet, with the church, you know, needing a ton of stuff, we're getting started there pretty quick on doing the bathrooms over. Eagle Brook's going to help us get that ball rolling. But I'm sure there's a lot more there than we have accounted for that we may need to help pitch in for um it, it'll go fairly quick. And I think when we saw the free cash number, I, I agree, we're not looking to just go blow it all. I, we just felt like that was one area that um, because it was such a large expense, we thought, um, you know, that would be a, a good spot to, you know, to ask the town if they would, they would put that money towards that project and, and free up the ARPA to have a little more flexibility on the Leary lot and other projects that are coming up that we don't have to go to town meeting and say, Hey, we need a hundred thousand for the church. Cause we're going to do, you know, something over there that makes a big, a big difference. So. And I misspoke on the dollar amount that we have right now. It's a million three thirty seven. Um, but one of the other things that, that you'd voted <laughs> to take out of the ARPA funds was the permitting software. Mm -hmm. um, that was about 50,000. And there were uh, some other I'm things trying to as remember, well. I'm trying to remember what else there was. Um, it might have been the, the dump body. I don't remember yep. if that was coming out of ARPA. Yeah. Um, was, what was, we've spent so far this year was almost 16000 and I'm pretty sure all of that was related to the HVAC, but I can't tell you for sure. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to distract from what we were talking about, just asking that question about ARPA versus this, but... I guess I just have two concerns. One is sort of what John said, but I think everyone's feeling, and that is just, it would be a real shame to spend an awful lot of money for a big system and have it only last for, you know, half of its normal life because of renovations or teardowns or whatever we're planning. But um, hopefully we're thinking about that when we make this move. And then the other concern I guess I have, I think this is the discussion where I heard you say, we still don't know what it's going to cost. And so we're doing one of these sort of, you're asking us to sort of up to 250 when I think you said it's going to cost a lot less than that. So I guess well, not a lot, mm -hmm. just less. Okay. Between 200 and 250, David. Yep. Yeah. We, we That's actually the estimate that. right now. Yeah. We okay. see how much it costs on the high end. We're yeah. just trying to find a lower bidder. Right. I, I just want okay. to one that like, this isn't a nice to have, like we, we, we have to properly cool this area. Yes. And I don't know if any of you have ever uh, been in that area before, but it's, it's all concrete. Once it heats up, it's not going to cool back off. It's it's a really tough area to heat and cool. So. And it's this has been a band aid situation for years to this point. I I uh, it's, I'm surprised that John has made it last this long. And is it a heating problem too, or just a cooling problem? I think it's both. And then they have water condensation that's that's happening in there that shouldn't be. You know, it's it's um it's deteriorating their side of the building. I think. Yeah. From from my understanding of it. Go ahead, John. I, have a couple. Um, I mean, shouldn't we say where the 250 is going to come from in the vote? This is giving. You say it in the motion, John. We need to go increase taxation by yeah. 250. No, it'll be in the Wait. motion. Pardon? Yeah, you can't. It'll be you in the say motion. Say it in the motion. Yeah, the, the article says to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise provide. So yeah. that could involve. Yeah, but oh, raise an yeah, but we don't have the motion. We're voting on. I, I've always had a problem with yeah approving these warrants when we don't have the motions. Yeah, so you don't have the motion until you've approved the warrant, John. 
the motion they... comes after the warrant is published. And the reason you leave the language open is so that if you have to find another funding source, even up to the meeting itself, you have the flexibility to do that. Yeah, That's the, the reason the motion's well. written the way it's written. Yeah, it, um, I was at Sorry, a, the article is written the way it's written. Yeah. I misspoke. I was at a uh, municipal law conference last Thursday, and in that conference, they specifically said not to limit yourself in the article. In the article, you need to state all the possible funding sources because you never know what's going to happen between the time that you set that and the time that you have town meeting. With that, we, with that said, <laughs> we did the, what are your choices? Your choices are free cash or stabilization, right? And we did the uh, taxation. In order no. to do stabilization, you have to vote by two thirds, right? But right. We can't so we can't either. Why? Go ahead. Well, we've already said that bec because so we've already set meeting. the budget for the year. There's no wiggle room for two hundred and fifty thousand to come out of out of taxation. No. We we can't do that. We've hit our two and a half. This is just a special town meeting, so you know we haven't set the budget for next year or anything like that. It's just money that we have already. Just curious. Didn't we discuss this whole? I mean, wasn't this part of our last year's budget discussions? Yes. And so, did we just decide we weren't going to fund it, or did we assume it was coming out of ARPA? We didn't know the two fifty at that time. I think, and the that's SDF why we said, it was one hundred thousand. Yeah, and that's right. why we funded it with ARPA, um, along with. Um, you know the permitting software, the three hundred twenty-five thousand for the freight liner that I think just arrived, and the um, sander dump body, which was fifty-five thousand. I think I think so was, you voted possibly to do the freight liner, but the freight liner was voted at town meeting, right, to come out of other means. Oh, I had an old sheet, maybe, but I thought it was done. What is the exact quote that you said, Mark? Two hundred fifty thousand is what's in the motion. That and was the quote you got. I think the and quote that we got was uh, let me, I'm, I'm actually trying to pull it up. Now the freight liner is in our is in our town budget. So we took that, we actually took that out of capital stabilization. We did. Yeah. So what else did we put in there? But but so, I quoted that if if the money was in danger of being clawed back, you would do the freight liner out of yeah. out of our but that's my my memory. Indians. Yep. Go ahead, Dave. I'm still just curious. So, so was there anything in the budget, the final budget for this year, directed towards this HVAC? Was there a hundred thousand in there somewhere? Yes. No, no, no not I, out of the town budget, just out of ARPA, ARPA. funds. Right. And now the select oh, okay. is saying we would rather not pay for the HVAC system mm -hmm. out of ARPA funds. We'd like the town to pay for that. Was okay. It? So then, the other interesting question is just somehow. From last spring to now, there's been a jump of 150 percent. Yep. Yes. It, uh, moved yep. to uh, 204,000. When the when the so how are they thinking it's going to be funded? Free cash. Yeah. Free cash. Yeah. So the bid was 204,000. Yeah. What I have for me is it was 204 without engineering. So okay. I think the rest uh, are engineering. So there's engineering and it's been however long they'll have to rebid it. So who knows what it'll be. Yeah. Now. So is what you're um, this is a, a kind of a, a confluence of uh, issues with cost escalation, supply chain considerations, and um, yeah, only having a single bid. Anybody else? No. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, it's again it's a little off topic about bidding though, but so I think someone said it's a decam project, so it just gets listed. So send somebody bids, but do we actually go out and shake the trees and go to people and say, hey, you should bid on this when we only have one bid? I mean, there must be we must be able to figure out who the HVAC people are in the four western counties who would be able to do this. So there's bidding requirements in the statutes, David. Yeah. Um, we have to do a, a significant amount of work. Um, certainly, if local companies want to bid, they can, but we have to pub publish this statewide. Because no, we I get that. It through the combi system. I can answer that a little bit, David. One, uh, we only got one bid. I, I reached out to a local HVAC and I said, why didn't you bid it? He said, because it because I knew it was going to be a decamp bid. It was going to be more than what you guys had originally figured. So I think, I think you'll see a, a, more bidders now that it's 
reasonable because he looked at it. He's like, there's no way you're going to be able to do that for a hundred thousand. I'm not bidding it. Yeah. So. Oh, because they knew how much the town and yeah, because well, the town didn't vote it. It's our no. There was some. There was some. Uh, there was some initial kind of. John could probably answer this more, but there was some initial kind of figure on what what we thought this was going to happen be. And when I talked to one of the guys, which I was surprised he didn't bid, he said, "Oh yeah, I saw it." And I I think he meant met for an early walkthrough or something. He said, "There's no way you're going to do this. Is a decam job. It's got to be bit more than that." And we weren't bidding it as a decam originally, right? So I don't. I don't no, it didn't hit the meeting. threshold until it came back, Trevor. Yeah, because he he and he knew it was uh, not going to meet that. It was going to okay. be more than that, so he just didn't bid it. Got it. Yeah, but I think we'll we'll see him bid it now. Any other discussion? All right. So it's been moved and seconded for Article Five pending CIPC approval. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. David Sharp. Aye. David Sharp. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. John Bresky. Abstain. Beth Brown. Beth Brown, aye. Jim Cambius. James Cambius, aye. So that's 501 that passes. Casey had their hand up. Oh, go ahead, Casey. So for purposes of reflecting this in the warrant, um, so could... I need to clarify two things about this one. Is it up to 250 that your recommendation is pending capital is approval? Yes. Uh, pending capital recommendation. Yeah. Up to pending crap capital's recommendation. Yep, yep. Up to 250. All right. So for purposes of the question before that, um, it says subject to approval by capital. Do we want to frame these so they are? Yeah, they should say the same thing. Consi that's what I'm asking. Can yeah, we make it consistent. sound consistent? Yeah. And what's the terminology you want me to use? So I can say finance committee recommends up to blah, 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 pending CIPC recommendation. Yes, beautiful. Okay. Are, are we doing this for procedural reason, meaning we're saying they should have gotten it before we got it? Or are we actually saying we are not going to approve it unless they approve it? Exactly. That's a good question, David, because technically the planning, the capital improvements planning committee, they send a recommendation to the select board um, as to whether they should, something should be funded. The select board actually has to report to town meeting. I think, I think the idea is that if they reject, if they do not recommend, then we want to be able to reconsider. That's the, that's the goal. I mean, if if they have good reasons for not approve, not recommending it, then maybe we should rethink it. Find out what, find out why. Anyway. So if we you good with that? We approve it if CIPC recommends that would cover. It. Yeah. Right. CIPC could feel strongly to pay it out of capital stabilization instead. Well, but if they don't recommend that, that means right. That's what they are saying. Yeah. If they don't recommend that doesn't mean we don't either. Well, we would have to. Have, it it would mean that there is no recommendation from finance, I guess. Or we would have to meet again, like right before the special meeting, make yeah. up our mind. Right. I would like to. Are we? Are we? We're happy with this, one, right? You're good, David. Yeah, I guess I'm just a little confused about what exactly. I think Casey is too, maybe about what exactly we are saying when we say subject to or pending CIPC approval. Because see, I, as a finance committee member, my view of CIPC is sort of they're the um, the folks who are tasked with prioritizing the projects in town, making sure they're uh, worthy, and then also kind of prioritizing them. Not so much voting up and down on the funding of them. Maybe I'm mistaken. So we we heard these projects didn't, didn't go to CIPC yet. So that's what I thought we were saying. Well, so something usually maybe they would have recommended this as a 
quote unquote worthy project before we would be asked to talk about financing it. Right. Usually. So normally it would go to CIPC before we see it. Right. I, in addition to what you said, though, um, I agree they prioritize, but they also or dig into each of these capital projects and ask a bunch of questions. Yeah. And I, I like, this is just me talking. I yeah. feel like based on what I've seen so far, I can recommend approval or not. Um, but we don't have the full scope of information that we would normally have had the process been correctly followed. So since we're still, um, pending the CIPC review, if um, that I think exactly what Jim said, if CIPC disapproves it, then I, I, I want to reserve the ability to look at it again from finance committee and, and, and think about it again. Yeah, That's okay. what that means to me. We've had this specific item in, in front of CIPC like three times. So if, um, that's why I was comfortable making the motion. I, I've already dug into this several times. But yeah, yeah we, we usually meet with all the department heads um, for their requests. And to Julie's point, dig into all of them. Very yeah, hard. no, no, no. I, I agree with that. I'm not saying you don't. Yeah. So, no, Drew, I think I agree with what you're saying. I was worried that we were sort of saying... You know, if you say no, then we say no. We we haven't actually said that. Yeah. What we've said is yes if they say yes, which I think that's <laughs> splitting hairs. But it, yeah. there, you're right. You there. usually have a meeting after CIPC, but, but it just yeah, didn't whatever. happen this way. But yeah. started you do what you do. All Yep, exactly. Casey, you had your hand up. Just ignore me. I was reading something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Nine more to go. What okay. if we Nine skip more to, go. to Article Fort, the last one, the Article 14? Here's why I'm thinking this. It's eight o'clock now, mm -hmm. another half hour. We'll, we will have been going for two hours, and then we'll have to think about whether we want to reconvene or if we want to mm -hmm. keep plowing through this. But I think Article 14 is important to discuss now while we have a whole bunch of people. Yep. Except for Beth has Yeah, to I'm leaving in a minute, but I'll. All right. Stay yep. All right. So Article 14 um, addresses the need for the town to cover the costs of the emergency spending for all of the flooding that happened this July, this last July. Um, we've spent um, about a million at this point, and uh, the expectation is that we will spend at least another million to a million and a half, if not another three million and um, certainly by next June, we have to decide how we're paying for this. Mm -hmm. And it would be all fine and dandy to wait till annual town meeting to make a decision. However, uh, we're running out of money. Right. And until we get money coming in for taxes, we're possibly going to have some shortfalls and the recommendation of the financial advisor that the town has is you don't want to borrow money in anticipation of revenues mm -hmm. because that looks bad and that will affect your credit rating. Yep. So the idea here is to borrow, to get a borrowing authorization for, I think up to 4 million mm -hmm. for the costs of, of the repair work if in fact we get money from the state, great, then yeah. we'll borrow less. But we need to have authorization to be able to cover our our, our expenses. I, and um, so this is in hopes of doing that, obviously to be debt excluded because we can't afford to put this into the budget. So um, there would be an election also to um, to get this debt excluded can add to that too a little bit go for it so we had an extensive discussion last night about this a little bit at our select board meeting um we um or yesterday i think we had a quick meeting yesterday and we were talking about um sarah was concerned all the things that brenda said about cash flow and we're doing everything we can as a town 
to communicate with um, the assessors and the vendors they use to get us on early and um, talking with Heather at the water department to get the um, meters read as early the as the time. Yeah, the districts to get those numbers to us so that we can we can get our tax bills out, the sewer bills out to get that cash flow in. We struggled a bit on the dollar amount um, for borrowing. So the major, so we have spent about a million dollars. That doesn't include, there's still, I think, 300,000 coming in for the paving for Pine Nook. And then we haven't even addressed, um, you know, Hoosack Road is still shut down. There's a lot of other projects we have not done and yet. There's some stuff on River Road. A river, and River yep. Road right river now road. slipped about a foot over the weekend. We've been, you know, we spent some money there after the storm to try and sure that up. The rain has just been relentless this year, and that has slipped again. So um, Carolyn's concerned it won't make it through the winter, um, and we may have, you know, we may have a catastrophic shutdown of that road. So she's, um, so we were initially talking, Casey was talking about a $2 million borrowing just to make sure, we may not run out of money, but just in case we do, um, we wanted that authorization to borrow. We have to do the ban over again on December 8th. So um, we were thinking about making sure that we had enough money to pay those bills. I'm he hesitant on the, um, you know, like authorizing to go and spend a million and a half on, on River Road. We really don't know what that is yet, but, but we thought instead of asking twice, so we put a cap of $4 million borrowing authority that way we pay our bills, kind of get us open. We are trying hard with the state through other towns that have been hit hard too. Conway, Lemonster, Andover, like everybody got hammered this year. So I think they're all working on a an appropriation bill at the state to try and help out. What number that is, we don't know yet, but we thought we should have at least the borrowing authority make sure we don't run out of money right around the holidays just before the tax bills come out because we have been spending a lot you know the schools are expensive you know the warrants i've been signing are two and a half million you know or two million or they're they're a lot so the money is going out the door and we're just worried about that so it's it's the delta between the kind of one and a half to two million dollar emergency get the roads ready for the winter and this like four million if river road goes or what we're going to do with river road so that's kind of why we thought you know carolyn was thinking four or five million we kind of felt tim and i and everybody we settled on like we would ask for a four million dollar borrowing praying we don't get anywhere near that but just to have that um, knowledge so that the taxpayers understand, the residents understand. We never spend taxpayer money on roads, but we've gotten hit hard and we really need to address this. And we're hoping the state will bail us out along with everybody else, but you just can't bank on that. So, There's no guarantee. Right. It's cash flow and um, we've got to do something with these. And we're worried about River Road. There's two, there's two or three spots, but one is really in, in tough shape and it just drops off on either side. It goes down, you know, 20 feet and it's a brook down below. And there's just no, there's just, it's not like you can just build up the side because there's just nothing there. It's a river at the bottom and it's tough, tough spot for a road. So one of the things I've noticed is that the West side of river road has a lot of streets that are washing into it. And I don't really see a lot of talk about fixing roads like Hawks road and some of those others. Are, are we going to have like more expenses come in for the the roads leading in from the west side? Um, yeah, there. I mean, when you say west side, you're talking Hoosack Road and that like we haven't done anything with Hoosack. Lower Road's done. Um, well, the one that I'm talking about is, you know, Hawks Road just completely unloaded yep. into River Road. Yep. And there's a bunch that are along you know, not the river side, but the other side yep. that have all been draining in. And, and I, I'm just worried, like, I I wouldn't want to go to the well twice mm -hmm. if we're going to have to address those roads as well, because we're currently not doing anything with them. Right. So 
is anyone talking about that right now? And should we be anticipating costs from those roads getting fixed? We've been uh, really trying to focus on the roads that everybody uses all the time. Um, yeah, I know Hawks might not be the best example. There's like right. people on that road. But, yeah, yeah, but but Huzak is one. That, you know, a lot of people come the back way through Conway uh, instead of Matthews and, and come that way. That one we have a plan for we just haven't tackled it yet we've been really focusing on like pine nook for this for the schools to open and lower road because that's a heavy travel road and was completely gone um yeah. matthews road we spent a lot up there to get that going stillwater road we we did a lot there um but yeah there it's, it's endless i mean i don't know where to stop we were just thinking like let's get what we can get open for the for the winter and then um and then move on from there. We have been talking that you see the list and there's another list of all the stuff that's damaged and rough estimates that got us to around four and a half million, I think. Um, so we are in the midst of talking about it, but it's it's struggling trying to figure out where to go. So this is what you've already spent? Yep. Does everybody have this? And, and, and really what we've paid, I think we still have stuff coming in. I was, I was uh, so... That list is just a little bit short. We've actually spent nine hundred and thirty three thousand so far. Um, now, what I've seen Diane enter so far for this next warrant is like two hundred bucks. but right. I, I know that that there's there's got to be more. I think there's three hundred for paving of of um, three hundred thousand three hundred thousand for Kevin, paving. Kevin mentioned four hundred thousand. Oh, okay. For, for Pine Nook. For Pine Nook, yeah. We knew it was some large number that we still haven't paid yet, and the bill hasn't come yet, but we did pave it. So just out of curiosity, has there been any thought given to moving River Road? <laughs> Since, I mean, the Deerfield River, you know, it's an active river and rivers move. You mean the Connecticut, Connecticut, Connecticut. River? No, the Deerfield River along River Road. Where it's the no, it's, it's, uh, that's, we're talking um, River Road where the Connecticut River is. Oh, okay. And hey, Lower Road, James. Oh, lower road you're talking about, maybe? Well, uh, uh, Mill actually, Village. I mean, yeah. In, in both cases, you know, they're right next to a river. Yeah. And yeah. No, no, there hasn't been any discussion of that. It'd be land takings, and I, and I, I assume the road went where it went because it was the easiest. But yeah, but yeah no, moved. I. There used to be factories between the road and the river. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing left. It's yeah. No, there hasn't. There hasn't been any discussion of that. So is the thought that we would is this like a tape tied over just to get us through until the taxes come in and then we would repay the loan and it's just a short-term thing no. no this is actually to fund what the repairs have to be right um that have to be paid for we we did an emergency spending declaration julie um but we have to pay that bill by the end of the year and we aren't in a, in a position to do a revenue anticipation note. Yeah, I th so so you got two things but, I mean, going on revenue here. Anticipation wouldn't solve your problem anyway, because once the revenue come in, if we spend it on this, then you're not going to spend it on what we had planned to spend it on. Right, right. So so the the deal is is the money has to be accounted for, or you you have to find a means to pay for all of those repairs by June thirtieth. But it's accelerated right now because we're at the time of year when when funds are short anyway, and we've now spent a million dollars on fixes that we don't have cash for. So we could wait till annual town meeting, but that's not going to help us with the cash flow problem. So we really need to take care of it now. We're going to have to take care of it anyway. So that just accelerated it, if that makes sense. Can you borrow from free cash? That million and a half dollars must be sitting somewhere, right? You can't borrow from free cash. You either use it or you don't use it. And no, if you but use the free cash for this, back. then you don't have any means for anything else. No, pay it back. And and it and it's and it's more a cash flow problem. Right. But to get around the cash flow problem, use that free cash and then pay it back once. But free space. cash isn't free cash. Free cash is money that you really might have but don't really. It's, so it's not sitting in a it's not sitting it's, in a bank. It's not account. money in a bank. Yeah, yeah. 
So there's no, two, you could there's use, actually two issues though. You could use stabilization. One is fund. cash flow. Right. right. That's, right. that's what exactly. I'm saying is if and you the have other a cash is flow problem how now, do we actually pay? But it still has to be paid for by June 30th. We still have to find a means to, to pay for it. it. We don't have enough free cash to pay for it. You don't have enough stabilization money. So really your only choice is to borrow. Or mm -hmm. if the unless the or state the comes state. through. Yes, yes. Exactly. We and a, or a mixture of two. Authorization. And if yeah. we don't use it all, we don't use it all. Great. Yeah. But the real issue is you have to fix the roads so people can use them. That is a requirement of the town is to maintain the traveling spaces in town. And unfortunately, we aren't the only ones that got hit, but there were other ways for some of these other towns to be able to do this. There is another issue here. And the questions come up in the past is we have a we have a semi annual tax billing system mm -hmm. and it may not be the most efficient way to maintain your cash flow long term. There is an article out there that is not on that warrant because I have not had a chance to talk to the board about it, and it would be a change from semi annual to quarterly. Puts a lot more load on the mm -hmm. well. Office. Actually, Sarah and Brenda and I have talked about that. It's not. Yeah, Sarah yeah. says that what you do is you you send out two tax bills at a time. So oh, yeah, one do now, one do a little bit more, or whatever. But you're still only doing two mailings, right? Well, but then they have to track all the money coming in, right? Yeah, right. If you can, but see. I, what you do is the first two two tax bills are at the last um, official tax rate, and then the last two tax bills are catch up produced at the approved rate that happens before January first. How many people are not going to forget about the second bill and not pay it, and then they're going to be late? Well, initially, yeah, it's a it's a change that probably takes some people time to. <laughs> so, are we going to be forgiving for that? All right, that's beyond the scope of right now. Yeah, We're it is, but right that's now. that's actually a question that can help long term help us with our cash flow issues. It's not every year this happens. But that's one of the reasons that a lot of towns have changed to a quarterly billing process. Okay, so back to this um, Article 14. I, I still feel like there's two issues. One, one question <laughs> is, how do we actually... That, so nobody's arguing, I don't think, that we don't fix the roads. Everybody wants to fix the roads. And nobody's arguing that we go for the revenue anticipation notice. Nobody wants to do that, right? Because that in, impacts our credit rating. Yep. Um, but I, there, there's two issues. One is how do you actually pay for the road repairs? Yep. And that has to be figured out by June 30th. Mm -hmm. And so if we wait for annual town meeting to answer that, we could, I'm not saying we should, we could. We could wait for annual town meeting to answer that question. Yes. And by then we would know whether like whether the state's gonna kick in or yep. whatever. That we was could our figure plan. it all out, right? Yep. But we have the cash flow problem. So we right. have to solve the cash flow problem definitely now. Mm -hmm. Um it, is there a way, like, can you authorize a short term? I don't even know how to do this. Like, can you authorize something just to borrow money to, 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 for the cash flow issue with the intent that that would be paid back within a year? So it's not a long term mm -hmm. loan. It's not debt excluded. Right. It's not whatever. It's, you just, that would still that be a revenue anticipation loan. Oh, it would. Okay. Uh, that's the way I see it. Okay. So um, the ban is what we would do because you'd borrow just right. planning on, but we could pay that off. But we could pay it off yes. with state funds should the state funds come. Correct. Through. Okay. Exactly. Good. Yep. I'm with you now. Yep. Okay. It'd be nice Great. to have a more solid estimate. But, yeah. Um, I, I agree. But who knows? I agree. Because <laughs> you just don't know what will happen this winter. But I think, um, and, and we've been trying to find other fundings for the, um, you know, for River Road, we've been looking at all kinds of other things, but they they take so long to happen. Like we're looking at maybe a Mass Works grant because that's what they did before, I guess, back yes. in years well, before nine, my time. Nine hundred seventy-two thousand or something. Yeah, like that and that that's failing for. again too. Yeah, so, yeah. Water is an awful thing. Yeah, and so their original estimate was four point seven million that they supplied to the state for the emergency spending. Um, I know. Kevin has worked hard to keep those expenses down, but. 
do we need to have an amount for the motion? I think we should. I think we should approve up to some dollar. Yeah, we had a four four million is what we were thinking. So we don't put the amount in the question. Right. Right. How come? Because that's how it's written. Changed. It allows you the ability to make a change if you need to. Because yeah. this, this gets printed bond, and bond put up everywhere. Has approved this article. Yeah. But when you make the motion, yes, the motion has a dollar value. Correct? Absolutely. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yep. So we what, we're vote, what we vote at town meeting is a dollar Absolutely. value. It's not unlimited. Yeah, it's not unlimited. Borrow $30 million. Right. To, right. And then we'll yeah. do an election for it after. I know that's the process, but I have a problem voting to approve something that without, an amendment. With, without the motion. I mean, we're voting something we don't really know in so, front of us, not in so front of us. And I know that's the process. I know it's always been that way, but I'm voting for something that I'm not sure of. Mm. But what we've done to get around that with finance committee is the finance committee says finance committee recommends this up to $4 million or whatever number mm -hmm. we pick. Yep. Right. Do you have um any, any more info on how you drive the 4 million? I, I, mm -hmm. I can see where the totals have come in right now for the 904 to yep. possibly 933 K. Do, yep. do we have the 4 million? So number? we figured that we figured you're probably, um, close to 2 million by the time you did all the stuff, the paving, all the other bills that we've already done and coming in, we're probably like one eight for that. And then um, we were conservatively saying about if, if River Road fell apart and we had to emergency open that up this winter, we thought about 2 million for that. But that's a dartboard on a wall. We honestly don't have a number on that. We've looked at some, cause it really depends on what you have to do. And it's such a brutal spot there. You're probably going to have to, you know, drive metal sheets into the ground to try and get something to stabilize along there or start at the very base and, and cement block it all the way up. But you've got to widen the road to, cause it's, it's just too narrow. It drops right off at the curb and it drops straight down to a, to a stream bed. And it just keeps slipping. So we just don't have a figure on that yet. Yeah, I don't know where you'd move River Road, though. I mean, it just in that spot, you'd have to go, yeah, up over. I don't know. It's just because you've got so many rivers, uh, brooks coming down, and, and it's really steep. Um, you're talking, you know, 10, $20 million to move that thing, probably. Last yeah, it's just not anything that we could afford doing, I don't think. Maybe it's just cut it if you're drive north or you drive south. Yeah, exactly. At some point, you're right. It's, uh, I mean, I know that different roads in Montague by the book mill were like that. You used to be able to go the back way down along there, and they couldn't afford that bridge at one point. I don't know if it was a railroad bridge or something, but it shut down and it's never been open in my lifetime since. So, so is there a way? to I'm thinking about our, our crosswalk that we just voted. So so if we vote four million dollars mm -hmm. for this and the state comes through with three million dollars, mm -hmm. then we still have authorization on the books to borrow up to four million dollars. Right. What stops us from saying we've already approved four million? We're going to take yeah. that four million and keep yeah. doing roads. Right, right. I don't know if there's language that can be, um, you know, four million less any state funding. Yeah, I was going to say for yeah. these specific, for you know, these specific, specific, yeah, this, this is yeah. January what storm the purpose is. Yeah. Now, if you wanted to reallocate the unused borrowing towards something else right you go to town meeting for that good or Casey's, resend it casey's yeah. nodding her head yes um yeah but it says extraordinary road and sidewalk repairs right and for all the costs related incidents, you could blow field. another four easy right i yeah. mean there's so many areas to all do the culverts washing uh, out yeah all the, Absolutely. i mean I, I can see somebody arguing that you know uh, we got yeah Thirty-two million culverts in town exactly. that need to be replaced for for yeah. climate change or whatever. I mean, maybe yeah, maybe the language is you know um, borrowing up to four million dollars less any state state aid. Um, 
you know, or, or however that works. So for, yeah, for this specific for this purpose. specific yeah. purpose, these these Jan these uh, July storms. You know, this that, that's how we've dedicated this July storms, and we've documented all the all the issues, um, the river road, the you know, everything's have photos, and we know all the damage. So that's really what we would address. I mean, that's the goal. What if we uh, just approved up to two or recommended up to two million? Would that bridge us to the next town meeting? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it would. Unless and, River Road washes out. That was right. Carolyn's concern. That's the problem. But, but, but that is again but, an emergency. But by then, I don't know. Maybe I'm being optimistic. But by then, we should have tax money coming in yeah. to cover until next town meeting. And if it's we, another if we emergency. Yeah, and it's another emergency. So it's another I, emergency. You have to settle by June thirtieth, and you have to provide passage. That's what I. That's one of the reasons I think Carolyn's thinking that way. Right. Because no matter what, you still have to fix the road. You can't just honestly that road that traffic. A lot of that traffic goes to the rail yard. Yeah. Hmm. Julie, are you worried about money being spent on non weather related damage, like other road projects? That's yeah. what I'm wondering, David. Yeah. So, so why don't we just add language that says that up to $4 million for, you know, uh, any road uh, road work related to weather events incurred between, you know, June 1st or 1st of 2023 and June 1st of 2024. Then you get rid of the wear and tear arguments you're worried about. People yeah. say, oh, Black Brooks flooded to get in a normal storm. Let's deal with these issues. Yeah. I'd almost rather keep it at two. And um, th my reasoning for that is the select board did say that we were going to fund the uh, HVAC system out of ARPA and then change their mind. Yep. So, you know, I don't want to beat you up, Trevor, but you can. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want us to, to borrow the four million and then change our minds again. Yeah. So, change more... your mind about what it's for, you mean? Yep. But <laughs> we still be saying what it's for, whether it's two or four million? We would. Yeah, so it says in here, extraordinary road and sidewalk repairs. <laughs> so extraordinary, I guess, are the, but well, our, our it's not ordinary. Yeah, our recommendation isn't binding, though. So, you it's know, not binding. this could just pass. And probably are. Yeah, the town votes, not a, it, it, yeah. it sounds just a, But if we so, recommend $2 million instead of $4 million, I think a lot of people in town would be like, that sounds sensible. Yeah. Let's, let's Unless have you have to go yeah. back. That's one of the yeah, things why that we... everybody's trying to avoid. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If we if we know, if we feel comfortable that it's only going to be put on to extraordinary stuff, and the numbers are already pretty high, and there is some devastating storm coming up, wouldn't it be a real pain to have to go through all this again? Instead of just you have to call a special election. That's what that's what nobody said right this second. That's an expensive thing to do. We did it last year. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what eight, ten grand or something. The I guess the um the option is the finance committee recommends two million. The select right. board puts a four million dollar budget on it. Dan says, Finance committee, what's your thoughts on this? And we hash it out on town floor. And the yep. people can decide, hey, we feel more comfortable with two. Oh, select board, you've made a good good uh, argument for the four million. Let's not come back here in a little bit. We're worried about River Road two or not. Or we think, hey, finance committee, that's a good idea. It, uh, we've got to put four, I think, anyways. And that way um, we could because we can't go we can't go up at town meeting. We can go down and exactly. I'd be down to two. Literally, that was my thought to begin with. But um Carolyn felt strongly about tackling River Road if it if it we're very worried about that washing out this winter, but um or next week. <laughs> so but yeah, we could we could do it that way. I mean, what however you guys feel. I think that Carolyn will probably being chair will probably put the floor on it and then we could have that discussion on town meeting. That's fine. So don't forget, we also have to send this to town to town council. Bond council and town council have both looked at this um, and approved the language. The if it were to pass, the select board would have to call a special election for it, um, and that language has to mirror what this language says because they have to correlate. Um, 
I think if you're worried about language, we could see what council and bond council say. Mm -hmm. But frankly, the one of the reasons that they do all this work is because they both have to, at one point, especially with the borrowing, you have to go back to bond council and bond council goes through every step and reviews it because bond council has to make an opinion before the borrowing is complete. So for purposes of the questions you have and concerns about language and what it could be used for, council's gonna pay attention to that, both of them. Mark, can you restate why you are wanna go from four to two? Yeah, uh, we only need two. Um, we're, we're saying four because we might need it. I mean, it sounds sensible, but I, I, I think that we should vote on what we need. We need $2 million. We, we do actually need to repair River Road like that, even if we don't. Um, I mean, we've got, this is falls in the same damage. Um, we yeah. need to do something with it, whether it's shut down completely and it's an emergency repair or it's more planned out is another question. But yeah, yeah but we, we need to vote do on something that in yep. the next town meeting mm -hmm. and budget for it. Yep. And have more concrete numbers. Yep. Um, you know, no uh, doubt. Instead of just a, you know, a, a swag, we could right. potentially have a much more solid figure. I agree with you. So the other example I'm thinking of is the front of the elementary school. This this actually makes sense when I get to the end of the comment. <laughs> so we're doing the front of the elementary school. We have a grant. We're going to do a, a more elaborate and fancier and much nicer front to the elementary school because we have a grant. So if we approve $4 million for extraordinary road and sidewalk repairs, we could, I could see the argument being made that, well, we have $4 million. Let's yeah. rebuild the entire, I don't know what, I, I can't yeah. think of how to make a road fancy, but, <laughs> but I can see that like going beyond what is necessary, necessary because we have approval up to $4 million, mm -hmm. might as well spend it and get ourselves a nice big fancy road. Yeah. But uh, are we acknowledging it's only for these weather related storms? Yeah. But look at the argument we just made for the, the $8,000 or $9,000 for the crosswalk. We're like, oh, well, three years ago, we approved money because we were going to do whatever we were going to do. Town common. Well, that project went away. The four, the $40,000 is still approved. It's laying there in a pot. We might as well use it for this crosswalk. That crosswalk was not the original intent of whatever funding was, was passed, what was yep. discussed, but it meets the language that's in there. Right. So if you say extraordinary road and sidewalk repairs, well, River Road was damaged in a in a flood. And um therefore this is not ordinary repairs, it's extraordinary repairs. Didn't didn't I'm sorry. Okay. Wasn't the crosswalk money that was um given to us? No. No, First, that's a streets thing. It's a match to a grant. So it's we got a, a grant. A and this a grant. has always been our match was the nine. We were going to take it from free cash, but then we thought we have this funding that was planned for complete streets. It hasn't started yet, so we would use it there. But yeah, no, that think, was point. I think what Julie is saying is that this way somebody won't be able to decide, hey, let's put bike lanes on River Road uh, because mm -hmm. we have money to do so rather than strictly using the money to repair the damage, if you see what I mean. That right now there is no limit to that. Or it's a obvious I'm acute I'm need. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Mark, sorry. I'm, I'm also making the recommendation in case it goes the other way. You know, Maybe we, we really do need to put piles in and maybe it needs to be more than two million. Maybe mm -hmm. it needs to be six million. Right. So I'd rather be precise about the, you know, the bridge loan we're giving ourselves to buy us to, mm -hmm. you know, the next annual town meeting and budget season to do River Road the right way, if we can swing it. No. I tend we to agree. don't have a motion at all. <laughs> um, I'd so like to make a motion to recommend Article 14 up to uh, four mil or sorry, two million. Okay, we have a so second. 
mark uh, to four million, two million. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any discussion? You discussed this ad nauseum. Does anybody <laughs> feel strongly enough that they would like it to make a motion to amend this up to four million? Is the two million number a number that's already been um, uh, the works two million dollars of works already been done that we have to pay for? A uh, pretty close. It's not yeah. all completely, but uh, I think we've paid for a million already. We still have about four hundred thousand in paving that the bills are on their way, and then there's still who's act we haven't even touched and no, uh, whopping river road, river. and then the new river road problem, which, like you said, we can touch touch that later, but. Hopefully, so you're saying so. There's roughly five hundred thousand in what we're voting for that still hasn't been um, earmarked to a project in town yet. Well, it hasn't been spent. It hasn't, it hasn't been, been spent. spent. Yep. But but there is obvious still storm damage work to be done. Oh yeah, beyond that. Yep, for sure. Beyond the five hundred thousand. Yeah, I mean I, I forget what the number was for who's act, but that was re re. Uh, designing the road and taking the curve out and it was a lot of work to kind of get that thing squared away i know i saw a number on it somewhere but it was not I thought, cheap i thought i saw or heard kevin say three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. that's what i was thinking yeah no that's probably right because it was straightening out the curve and moving the the stream bed a little bit to kind of straighten that out a little bit because it is a tough spot when you come around there and then hit that culvert it was good so yeah, so there's the 400 in paving coming and then the 300 for that plus the nine we have. So that's why we thought around 2 million just to right there. And then we still have a, a ton more to do all over. But that'd get us, that'd get us to pay the bills for sure and hopefully get the state money in. Yeah, really and I think we should difference. go after it and yeah, properly oh, engineer it. Absolutely. After that. Yep. Any further discussion? Okay, so we have a motion for up to two million. We'll do a roll call vote. Um, Dave Sharp. No idea. Pass for it. <laughs> What's that? We'll I'll come back to me. Jim Cambius. <laughs> James Cambius, I. John Pareski. John Pareski, I. Julie Chalpin, I. Mark Brennan, I. David Sharp. David Sharp, I. All right, that's unanimous five zero zero. Okay, it's 8.35. We have left several items. Three of them are zoning. Uh, I, th I think that we should, here's a proposal, that we stop now, that we set up another meeting next week, if we can find a day that we can get a quorum, um, and that will give us time to read Mm -hmm. all this zoning stuff that's on here, um, which I haven't even looked at yet. So, uh, yeah. I just want to update everybody. So they did make a few changes last night um, okay. during their zoning hearing. I don't have the language. Once I have the language, we're going to provide access to that language. Um, you will still see it, I believe, in three articles. Um, but what we were going to do is make it available online, make copies available here um, so that people have a chance to read it. But to your point about allowing the committee time to read it, um, just know that we don't have the final language reviewed by council yet. That's the first thing that happens tomorrow morning. Okay. And then select boards meeting tomorrow night. So some of this stuff could change after- Yeah, some of this stuff could change. Yeah. Okay. So to one question I had with regards to your last vote. So it's finance finance committee recommends up to 2 million. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure I have that right. In other words, what I'll do is I'll put in whatever recommendations you have that are final for articles that are that that live on the warrant. So if the $3,000 goes away, that recommendation, then the recommendation goes, away. goes away too. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's why I'm asking for clarification. Yep. I want to be sure I'm right. Yep. 
Okay. Do you guys have your schedules now? Can we look at a date yep. next week? Any day but Tuesday for me. Any um, day but Tuesday. I'm okay. Not, I'm only um, good for Thursday. You're what? <laughs> Thursday is the only day I can make it. We can't make it on Monday because it's Indigenous People's Day, right? Yep. Oh, right. I mean, we yep. can meet. It's fine with oh, me. I don't care. Huh? Uh, no, we can't. Yeah. And I, I, have, I don't want to start that argument. So I, I have a fire district meeting on Thursday, but I don't necessarily have to be here either. So I also can't do Thursday. Can anybody do Wednesday? No. Wednesday? I can you do can't Wednesday. do Wednesday. You can only do Thursday. Correct. Oh, correct. Or Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Oh, I can do Friday. I can do Friday. I can also do Wednesday. Actually, Tuesday, Wednesday. The only day I can't do is Thursday next week. <clears throat> All right. Who can do Tuesday? Tuesday? One, two, three. That doesn't give us a quorum. Who can do Wednesday? One, two, three. That's a quorum. All right. Who can do Thursday? Two, three. I guess I could early four. All right, yeah, Friday is unappealing. Did you say four o'clock? Yeah, early. So Thursday would be early, like uh, four o'clock, five o'clock, something like that. That I can do. I just need to be able to leave by six thirty. Yeah. Okay. What day did you say? Thursday the twelfth. No, you can't do it. What time's your fire meeting? Uh, six. Usually it's about a half hour. Yeah. Ten, six, six Everybody's. Can anybody start at four I on Thursday, so. the twelfth? I mean, I think so. I can't guarantee it though. Didn't you have a quorum on Wednesday? We had a quorum on Wednesday. What happens if we meet or and what, just oh, tell the town what about we didn't have a quorum, but the people were there voted for it? <laughs> no, serious. It's not the uh, binding vote. It's not the binding vote of the finance committee. No, but yeah. that, it's just our recommendation anyway. All right. I'm sorry for whoever couldn't go on Wednesday, but it let's do Wednesday because like. Thursday is actually really challenging for me. So Wednesday, how early is the earliest we can do it on Wednesday? 5 p.m.? Anytime. I can do anytime Wednesday. 5 p.m. David, how about what's your schedule like on Wednesday? That's, that's fine. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime's fine. 5 p.m. Yep. Wednesday 11th at 5 p.m. We will reconvene and look at the rest of this stuff. Between now and then, look up those zoning things and start reading all that stuff. We should get updates. Wednesday. Joy. The 11th, 11th at, at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. I will. So, Julie, you need to post that by Friday because Monday is yeah. a holiday. Okay. Post by Friday. I'll do it when I get home. <laughs> Anything else we can talk about tonight? Anybody? We have a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. I second it. Um, Jim, say aye. Aye. We're voting to adjourn. <laughs> John? Aye. Aye. Mark, Mark Brown and I. David Aye. <laughs> 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 that was funny. <laughs> All right, we're done.